Okay, let's catch up on what's going on in the taking off world. We're going to update with me and Christy in this episode of the podcast. Hello and welcome to the Taking Off Podcast. I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Christy Schaefer. Okay, so Christy, right off the bat, we've got some different things going on here. Yes. So, yes, um, the podcast is audio. I've always thought of the pod. When you say the word podcast, I say it's audio. Um, but more and more, YouTube's podcast requires video. So I just put up a GoPro and, and just let it run the whole time haven't gotten any complaints but i run a film and video production company and have cameras on the shelves so it's been driving me crazy so i went ahead and set up three cameras so that we can um now i'm not manning them so if i'm out of focus that's going to be a bummer but uh anyway so i will try something new uh for those that are watching the podcast on youtube you'll see a little bit better camera work if you're listening on spotify itunes and all that it won't matter True story. I actually prefer watching podcasts. I don't know what it is. I like watching people talk with each other (laughs) than just listening. Well, the only, you know, so I I do, uh, Spotify is my podcast platform of choice. And um, occasionally I'll do listen to Joe Rogan and they have cameras. Right. And I do. And when, yeah, I do like that. Uh, Another popular podcast I listen to is the President's Daily Brief. That one on Spotify does not have video. So even when they do the video version of their big weekend hour-long thing, Spotify still doesn't have the video. You have to go to YouTube for that. So um, I don't know how all that works. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just here to talk. (laughs) All right, so we haven't really um, had it. This is our first time to get together for podcast recording in, oh, six weeks? Yeah. It's been a while. So what's going on with you? It's been a busy year for me. Uh, as you guys know, I upgraded to captain this year. And, I mean, it's been busy. It's. I think I finally got my, my head wrapped around everything. You know, a lot of people think, well, you've been flying the 175 for, you know, however many years. It should be a fairly easy transition to go from the right seat to the left seat. And in some ways that is true. But I found a really good way to explain it to people. When I was a first officer, especially a senior first officer, I got really comfortable in that seat. I knew what I was doing, all the muscle memory in my hand. I'm just go, go, go. And then when I went to the left seat, I feel like I'm using 150% of my brain power all the time. Like there's only so much RAM (laughs) available and I'm maxing it out on every flight because I have very little muscle memory still in this hand. So I'm looking around like, wait, where's that darn APU? You know, in this hand, it was flip, you know, and just do, go. And on this side, it's it's just different. And then the decision making, you're the captain now. Like everything falls on you. And so I find myself at the end of every trip, I just have this crazy decision fatigue. Like Kevin will be like, oh, you know, what do you want to make for dinner tonight? And I'm just like, uh, I like no more decisions. <laughs> right. So, um, so that's been really interesting, but I'm finally in a place where I have that muscle memory now. And I feel like the decisions are coming a little bit easier and it's weird when you upgrade to captain, you wind up experiencing things that you never saw as an FO. Um, so that's the other thing too, is, you know, they, the hope is that by the time you get to captain upgrade, you've seen and experienced so much that That nothing surprises you. Yeah, exactly. That nothing surprises you. And it's like. They call it the, the captain curse within the first like two to three months. You just start seeing and experiencing things. You're like, I have never seen this before. I have no clue what to do. Hold on. You know, can you give an example? Um, Interesting maintenance things, interesting weather things, Um, uh, you know, just like, uh, yeah, just so one in particular was like an interesting maintenance thing. And I was like, I have never seen this this thing before I've seen a lot of, you know, maintenance stuff come up, but I've never seen this. So I'm going to need an extra few minutes to make some phone calls to the dispatcher and our, um, maintenance operation control and and stuff like that. So, um, let's see weather, just weird weather stuff this year. 
Is it just me or was this year like the worst thunderstorm season ever? Well, I mean, for me, it just seemed normal, but. Okay. Maybe it was just me then because it was just really bad. It was like squall line after squall line after squall line. And just, you know, having conversations with the dispatchers and saying, hey, I'm looking ahead at this weather. It looks like there might be some storms firing off later. No, it's a stationary front. You'll be fine. You know, fast forward an hour in the air and your dispatcher is panic messaging you because they're like, we need to give you an alternate because there's weather firing up at your destination. (laughs) You know, just stuff like that. Weird stuff where it was like going into Charleston a few weeks ago, no weather whatsoever. All the weather was to the west, no weather forecasted for the airport. I knew I was going to have to deviate around some of the weather to get up and around or I guess down and around it. And I mean, the weather started to die off and it looked really good. Nope. It kicked off another line of storms that moved right over the airport, right at our time of arrival. Wow. So just stuff like that, you know, stuff that I per- I had not experienced yet. I mean, I'd experienced a lot of weather stuff, but just some weird stuff happening this year. Okay. All right. Well, on um, on my side, uh, a lot of things going on. I'm starting a – I'm going to school on YouTube. So um, I'm going to learn how to YouTube better. Okay. So uh, we'll probably see some changes with taking off, um, hopefully for the better. So that'll be interesting. And then the big news is I'm starting helicopter training. Oh, you're wild. <laughs> I'm going to add my rotor endorsement. I'm sorry, ro- rotor rating. I was like, me. wait a minute. Not endorsement, rating. Everybody so, leave comments now. I oh, want you to I shame always, Dan. I always get the terms endorsement <laughs> and rating confused and I use them interchangeably, wrongly, but I'm trying to get more more better about that. More better. We need to send you to endorsement rating school. Yeah, to grammar school. <laughs> grammar school. So I'm super excited to actually be learning to fly helicopters. Yeah. I think that um, I have more desire to fly helicopters than fixed wing, I will admit, at least right now. So why do you think that is? I don't know. Um, I do, you know, uh, growing up, um, uh, you know, Commodore 64, that tells you my age. Hey, um, I had a Commodore 64 growing up. I uh, I loved computer games, and one of the very first computer games I had with my very first PC was a helicopter simulator, and uh, I just loved playing that game. You just want to hover, don't you? No, I wanted to attack and fire missiles more than anything. Okay, we'll see if we can make that happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, they do have those like uh, those um, wild boar hunting. Oh yeah, excursions. yeah. We we uh, covered that with um, in at the Arrowverse original show, Throttle Jockey episode two. We took Chelsea out to hog hunt from a Robinson R forty four. There you go. See, that, all your fantasies come true. Yeah, and uh, you know, I really, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, learning to fly helicopters. Yeah, in all honesty, Dan did tell me the other day, guess what? This is what I'm doing. And we <laughs> we talked about it. So I may or may not make an appearance. Yeah, you, you um, uh, helicopters make you nervous. They make me a little nervous. Yeah, anything that hovers like that is just kind of weird to me. I don't it, know. You're like, how does this thing fly? Well, I mean, I know how it flies. I just realized that there's a lot of mechanics going on up under there yeah that allows it to fly and uh yeah mechanics that could fail well honestly you know what my biggest fear is believe it or not especially with the robinsons is the the mast bumping yeah that's kind of a wild principle when i started reading about that the tail yeah yeah uh you can't really like do a stall necessarily because it'll like a negative flexes. G thing. Yeah, the tail, yeah. the tail will come up and then the, the mast kind of brings the rotor down like that and it chops off its own tail. That's nightmare fuel for me. It is, but um, you just, you don't do that. True. <laughs> so yes. you, you try not to do that. And um, it, it takes, I from what I hear, it takes a lot to actually make that happen. But, um, you know, uh, I'm sure I'll be, trained and i mean the the place i'm going to helicopter institute at fort worth meacham um fox tango whiskey they uh it's going to be an academy a 141 environment 
Interesting. So I have never done 141. I'm looking forward to that. And um, so it'll be a little bit more intense. Um, there, From what I can gather, my research, there's no other really kind of helicopter academy like this around. So um, I'm excited to get into that and see what's going on. You know what happened last time when you were like, oh, I'm going to go skydiving. And then it became this thing <laughs> and it was like 100,000 subscribers and Christy goes skydiving. So is it 200,000 subscribers and Christy goes to get rotor lessons? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Christy has to fly a helicopter. Oh, my gosh. Christy solo is a helicopter. Yeah, that would be interesting. Honestly, that, oh, that terrifies me a little bit, but not as much as falling, like plummeting out of an airplane. Well, and, and what's interesting, I've been editing a little bit of um, going back. Uh, I did, the speaking of, of jumping, I did... Uh, go out the couple weeks before we did our big jump and I went through ground school and some lessons and two jumps with them but so I could do the solo jump by the time we did it and I videotaped that so I'm working right now on the video of the ground school and stuff you have to do to to get to that so okay that's actually kind of interesting so yeah so we'll um I'm good for the record I don't I don't need I'll do the ground school but <laughs> you don't need to jump solo I'm good you're good. Okay. Um, what else is going on? Uh, the Warrior is getting an avionics upgrade. And Lola is getting an avionics upgrade. I think you're ahead of me, though, a little bit. So yeah. what, what are you going to do with the Warrior's avionics upgrade? So I decided that I wanted so, – because we, we had a lot of conversations about what, what we were going to do. And I decided, you know what, I just want the conformity. Um, I've already got a Garmin 650. I want okay. all my, I mean, love them or hate them. Garmin is a good product. A lot of people depend on it. A lot of people know Garmin. So I'm going with the Garmin 275. So we're getting rid of the vacuum system. We're going to make it a really solid uh, instrument flying platform. And uh, so the two 275s to replace the uh, gyro instruments. And then um, I'm, and each 275 is an AHARS? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, because you have to have. If uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I think you have to have two AHARs to be able to to eliminate your vacuum system. Right. Yeah. I okay. mean, it's it, oh, I just smacked it. Um, like I know with the G5s, you still have to have a backup. Right. And I didn't want that. I wanted full. Let's just do this because I have like kind of a multi-year plan for the Warrior for the upgrades. Like some really cool big stuff coming. But I'm also doing a Garmin, um, a new Garmin audio panel. Uh, and in, I'm doing, uh, because my audio panel, I mean, it's old. <laughs> it's it's getting really old. And it's been really great, but it's definitely showing signs. Okay, so what, what Garmin audio panel are you getting? What is it? The three? Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. Again, it's all the decision and the, the knowledge fatigue and stuff right now. But I have. Uh, have you already bought it? Yes. Okay. I bought everything. Because I was going to tell you that um, I got the PS Engineering audio panel. It blows the Garmin away. Yeah. It's just amazing. Okay. So I'm getting the Garmin GMA 345 audio panel. Okay. So that's what I had. With the Bluetooth and all that good well, stuff. Well, no, I guess I had the older version. Okay, yeah. I'm getting the newer Maybe the, version. Whatever the older version was. Uh, but my PS Engineering 450B, the, it was... A sixty second install. Nice. And and it has an it has a screen. It has Oh that's cool. Two Bluetooth ability. It's it's so um, that you can listen to two songs at once. Yeah, well, here's here's where it's really valuable. You can listen to have music on, on one channel. You can have your iPad on the other. Oh, that's pretty so cool. So now with Four Flight and the audible warnings that Four Flight has, you can pu pump them into just the pilot. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, to me, the the PS Engineering, and I'm not sponsored by PS Engineering. Let me let me tell you, but I've been blown away by that panel. So, too bad you bought the Garmin. I mean, I wanted, like I said, I'm going full Garmin in the Warrior for right. conformity. And then the the I've got the KX155. I've put like three or four different KX155s in this airplane. I'm on my second. Yeah, because you know. Um, they're really great products, but they just 
Made it, made in the forties. Yeah, I'm, it well, seems like. Well, yeah, the, I mean they they die over time and the the little lights and stuff go out. So yeah, I'm replacing it with the Garmin GNC two fifteen Navcom radio. That I don't know. Um, yeah. It's basically it's like an, a newer version of the KX one fifty five. It's got some more stuff and I think it integrates like with your six fifty. All right, so you mentioned um, that you're going with Garmin. Look. Garmin makes a great product. I'm not going to argue on that side. For me, for me, here, here's the thing. I walk around Sun and Fun. I walk around Air Venture. I meet and talk to the president of Aspen, and he's a GA pilot. And I talk to their VP of marketing, and she's a pilot. And then I, I, I go over to PS Engineering, and they're pilots. And then I go to um, – uh, even Genesis, and they're they're made right here around the corner from us at Mineral Wells, and I get to know them. And I go to the Garmin booth, and I get to know some temporary help that they hired for the the show. And I went, I remember two years ago, um, I got to know one guy really good who was high up in Garmin, and two weeks after Air Venture, he was gone. Yeah. And yeah, I remember that. So for me... For me, I, I like business by relationship. It's the way I am. And I like to be able to to buy a product. And, and and Aspen's products are just as good as Garmin. You know, the, when you look at it apples to apples, they're, they're still there. But now I've got a smaller company where I can get to know the people. If I have a problem, I pick up the phone and call somebody and actually talk to them and not get a, you know, have to punch in a bunch of numbers or something or leave messages that get returned days later at the bigger companies. I mean, it, I look at it the same way with Bose versus Lightspeed. Bose is a great product. I'm not going to argue that. Lightspeed, again, got to know Alan, the president, and he's a pilot, helicopter pilot, by the way. Yeah. Um, you know, and you get to know those guys and you find out that, you know, it's a, a much smaller company, but they make just as good of a product as the, the leader in the industry. And uh, I just want to support those guys, I guess. And I'm a business by relationship. So for Lola, uh, and, and I don't knock you doing Garmin. I mean, Garmin's a solid product that makes sense. And and you made a point that you had to buy all Garmin. Um, and that's the other thing is Garmin being the 800 pound gorilla in the space, they dictate who and what they'll share with, and they don't play nice with others. Whereas when you look at Aspen, you look at Genesis, you look at uh, these other companies, they play nice with others and, um, they, sh they share the interfaces and things like that. And I, I really like that kind of, um, uh, position in the, in industry when they do that. Like you look at Apple, I have a lot of Apple, a lot of Apple products. I was but, going to bring that up. <laughs> but it, it really, they are, I wish there wasn't an alternate because they create some arbitrary connection, a lightning plug. They don't share it with the rest of the industry. Nobody else can use it. And it's a problem. And then later they decide, you know, let's, let's change the plug and, and they just do it almost, it seems like arbitrarily and, and they force all their users to have to buy or, you know, or, or go obsolete. Yeah. Well, you have to remember too, it, I would say that it depends on your mission for your airplane. So your airplane is your private airplane that right. really only you use. Right. And so, um, you get to know the avionics in it really well because you're using it. My airplane is in my flying club and um, a lot of different users, a lot, a lot of, of different, different people, but like almost everybody knows Garmin. Everybody knows how to use a Garmin. Like everybody knows how to use an Apple, love them or hate them. You know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm in the Apple universe too. I don't have an Apple computer. I've never had an Apple computer, mm. but I have always probably what, since the iPhone two, I think I've always had an iPhone and you know, I, we, and the thing is, is that it's like integrated in our lives, like iPads at work were given and, you know, so it's, it's along that same lines. And I know that it's funny because like Apple plays well with Garmin, Apple plays well with ForeFlight. I would say, you know, for you, if you wanted that user ability or whatever, um, get a Google phone or Google, you know, tablet or whatever, but then I couldn't get ForeFlight on it. And there's just certain things that I feel are a necessity between Garmin and 
and in this case, Apple too, since we're talking about that. But for, for me, because so many people, you know, get to fly my airplane within our flying club, you know, it just makes more sense to, to put something in there that's just pretty standard across the industry. I mean, you can't go wrong with a Garmin 650, and you're absolutely correct. It plays better with its own, or sometimes it'll only play with its own products. But honestly, that's kind of the, um, that's kind of where I've positioned myself and I'm paying for it by myself. You right. know, Garmin is not sponsoring me. I, to be honest, I didn't even ask, but for me, it's kind of like, well, I mean, it's, um, you know, this is, this is what it is, but, uh, I'm happy with the choices. I think it's going to come out really, really well. And I think it's going to be really cool to show people what it looks like when all said and done. And this is just the first step. I've actually got some bigger plans for down the road for like some what? more upgrades. Um, I want to put a third 275 in there to replace the engine monitor. And then, yes. So the 275 can serve as an engine monitor? It is It is very diverse. Yeah, okay. it's really, really cool. And then I can put in, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and get an autopilot installed. And then it's a full TAA aircraft at that point. A, a what? TAA, Technologically Advanced Aircraft. Okay. Which means that, so, you know, for your commercial training, um, you either have to have 10 hours in a retract and or 10 hours in a TAA aircraft. Ah, okay. So I forgot about that. Yeah. That right, clause. because that was so long ago. Yeah, so long ago. Uh, that we needed that requirement. So um, it's really, again, my mission versus your mission, it's really beneficial right. for the people in my flying club to be able to utilize that airplane as a TAA once they, you know, get past their instrument and they're looking at building those hours toward commercial. Yeah, of course, with Lola, she is a retract and a high performance, so she already had met that requirement of being... Right, she's a complex aircraft, yeah. so and she's very complex. So what I have decided, and um, some of my videos are a little bit behind, so when I posted like well we recorded a bunch of stuff at late july at air venture right and i'm posting those once a week so some of that is now starting to get long in the tooth um i have decided on my pfd i've decided on my autopilot and i'm s s working on what i'm going to do for now oh, you're Tom. replacing the autopilot i've got a 400b that doesn't even hold altitude anymore. Oh, I mean, this thing was made. Well, it's a good thing you can hold altitude, right? Well, yeah, that's that's where I use my CFI all the time. Is that uh, my crew is learning to fly, and so I have autopilot Brad, autopilot Ron. Okay. Um, Brad, <laughs> it's funny, is that um, Brad's somebody who's shot with me. I've known Brad for twenty five years, and in the industry, of, we've worked together for for decades now. Brad's always wanted to learn to fly helicopters. Oh gosh, you guys! But uh, I couldn't, I couldn't help him with that. But I could help him with fixed wings. So, Brad was part of my flight camp thing a year and a half ago, and he went from um, over a nine day intense period. He did get the solo, so he soloed. Then, after that, we've gone, we've gone to shoots to North Carolina. We've gone to shoots to Reno. Um, hmm. He's got, and he hand flies it all, and he's hand flown it through IMC. He's so he's already got, you know, you need three hours of hood time for your private. He's got like 12 of actual. So he's he's hmm. good there. And he's got, I don't know, 40 or 50 hours of cross country at this point. I mean, maybe not His logbook is going to look absolutely ridiculous when he goes to yeah. sit down for his check, right? He needs to beat up the pattern and, you know, learn to land and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, you know, he's he's been busy shooting and editing. And so... He hasn't done that yet, but uh, also I'm going to be doing now his dream of getting the helicopter. So maybe that'll fire him up as well. But um, so I've had autopilot Brad, um, the old 400 B Navomatic is, is that what it's called? Yeah. It's called Navomatic. That's amazing. That was that seventies marketing. Yeah. Yeah. So the that thing's almost as old as you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The Navomatic uh, won't hold out to the morning of that stuff. So I have decided on the Genesis S Tech 3100. Nice. And it's a digital autopilot. And uh, I'm excited. And um, is it like Alexa? Climb and maintain. Oh, I wish. I wish it was that. Okay. Um, I don't think it has the voice actuated. Uh, 
direction. But you know, once I decided on the thirty one hundred, I I I called them and talked to them. Um, I will admit that I have worked a deal with them now, but I had decided on the thirty one hundred um, before that. So just in full disclosure, um, you'll you will see I am going to videotape the install. I'm going to see how it does. I mean, I'm going to put um, video out there on on the 3100 and let people know how it is. Okay. Then for my PFD, I am getting the Aspen Pro Max. Nice. So I the, that's the three-screen Aspen. Uh, it fits right there in the, in the round dials. I don't have to do a whole bunch of, you know, panel cutting and, and everything else. So, uh, And Aspen plays super nice with everybody. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to that because the, the Pro Max, I think it's called the 2500 for Aspen, has a dual AHARs. So it, it also eliminates the vacuum system, the need for the vacuum system. But I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do because I do a lot of flying from the right seat. And so um, I don't know if I move my backup attitude indicator over, which is vacuum powered. I don't, I don't know yet. But the other thing is all my boots run off of vacuum. Ah. That's... So my, my de-icing is vacuum. Now, I have two vacuum pumps in Lola. Yeah. So the primary is a smaller pump, and that's what's running the gauges. The the bigger one is what runs the boots. So I don't know what I can do as far as getting rid of the vacuum pumps. See, that's the secret I have is I don't have de-icing in the Warriors. So <laughs> I don't. I just don't need it. You, you know what? I wonder it. if we could find like a boot STC <laughs> for the Warrior. That'd be silly. Yeah, that that would be silly. Um, you'd probably. I don't know if, the, or you could always do a weeping wing or something too. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. You're not, you're not going to have any weeping on, <laughs> no. on the Wong Warrior. No, although Brian and I were playing around last night, and he has like a <laughs> some 175 simulators on his uh, iPad, and so oh, we were nice. like, oh yeah, 175 conversion for the Warrior. Oh, I saw the uh, Instagram pic. Yeah, yeah, we went out and we just did some approaches. He, it had been a minute since he had done some, so we went up. Yeah, that, that's the only other news I have is I went up and with Brian Turner from Just Plain Silly. Brian is getting ready for his um, 121 interview coming up. Potentially. Yeah. No, it's it's that's not potentially. He has the interview scheduled. I know. I just don't know how public he's being about it. Oh, oh well, sorry, Brian. <laughs> that's out now. But well, I didn't say who or anything else. Yeah. But uh, um, I, I think he's mentioned interview. I uh, maybe not. All right. Well, I'll just, he doesn't watch our channel anyway, so he'll never know. No, I'm just kidding. He does occasionally. Well, the people will know. <laughs> the people will know. Okay. And um, so that's what I'm going to do with Lola's avionics. I've got a, there is a, we'll have to have a new front panel thing cut and made. And there was a company that reached out to me out of the Pacific Northwest called Six Pack Arrow. They have an STC for the older 172s that want to get like G1000s and, and things like that. The problem with the older 172s is you can't put that big 10-inch glass in there without cutting stuff. Yeah. And so they have an STC for that, and that's what they specialize in. That's really cool. Yeah, so yeah, no, your your plane is going to be a lean, mean cross country machine when you are done. You know, with that's it. that's what the mission is. Yeah, absolutely. we do nothing but cross countries in mm -hmm. that. So, um, I'm really probably the most excited about an autopilot because the Navomatic has has just been a problem. Yeah. So, all right, um, that's what's going on. Uh, anything else? Um, I mean, that's the big stuff for now. We. Uh, we could talk about some of the stuff going on in the industry, uh, I guess, in a different episode. Yeah, we, we'll cover some different things coming up. Um, there, I, I noticed, I, I will say this, there was a, a crash at First Flight Air, Airport, um, a sad crash. A, a Cirrus went down. At, oh, yeah, I saw and that. And fire, and apparently there were five people on board, including one child. Hmm. Um, so that's, and but it's elicited pretty hardcore serious discussions and with some people saying the serious is unsafe um i i don't see that i don't see the numbers the numbers i, I think that there is a bias towards serious people joke and make fun about it all the time but the serious is a good airplane and it, it's got a great safety record it's you know when 
when when it crashes, it crashes just like any other plane. And that's a great segue for our next episode. Yeah, and so we'll talk about that. So make sure you you listen. Um, all right, well, that's it for just channel update and what's going on with Christy, what's going on with me. And uh, don't forget our sponsors. Again, as I said, I, I like the pilot owned companies like Colton Mortgage, ColtonTakingOff.com, Marshall Protective Services, uh, MPSProtects.com, 67 Designs, the best camera and tablet mounts, a Cirrus Pilot uh, runs that company. There you go. So um, also Clemens Insurance, ClemensInsurance.net, and Flying Eyes. Use our discount code at FlyingEyesOptics.com. Discount code is taking off, all caps, one word for 10% off, and Z-Vision, the brightest landing taxi lights. That's another upgrade that I've done on Lola. The lights are amazing. I was flying into uh, a grass strip uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they said they saw me from, like, miles I away. I see you from, like, two Bravo air, like, airspaces away. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So anyway, uh, visit our sponsors. <laughs> I'm putting links in the description um, on the YouTube part, and um, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time on the Taking Off Podcast. Oh, I guess that was my thing. I've never done it on the podcast before.